Okay everyone, today I have a really cool experiment for you. So I'm going to be trying to see if you can use one glow-in-the-dark pigment to charge another one. Can glow-in-the-dark charge itself? Could you just end up with an endless loop of one glow-in-the-dark material charging the other one and that charging this one and back and forth and they just stay lit the whole time? This is the brightest glow-in-the-dark paint there is on the market. So I'll show you what happens when we just use lit by itself. But then I got this really cool material that they just came out with called Blue Lit. So this is the normal green glow in the dark, but they've actually come up with a blue glow in the dark material. So I haven't used it before, we'll see how the blue works, see how bright it is, and see if it has the same properties as the green lit here. With this one you can even get it to glow in the dark with just heat. So let's see if the blue works as well. And then we'll see if the blue lit can actually charge the green lit. And then I'll also be shining my 32,000 lumen flashlight on both of the blue lit and the regular lit to see which ones light up better. So let's see how bright we can get the world's brightest glow in the dark material with the world's strongest flashlight. Okay, here's our green. Okay, now the blue. Okay, so the first test we'll do is just an ambient light test. So let's see how bright the green lit is versus the blue lit. Okay, lights off, three, two, one. Whoa, look, look how bright just from the ambient light in the room when I turn off the lights. Look how cool this looks. So you can see that the green is way brighter than the blue already. But the question is, is this because the blue is actually less bright or it's just getting less light to charge it? So remember that in order to charge a glow-in-the-dark material, you have to use light that has a greater frequency than the wavelength of light that the glow-in-the-dark thing emits. For example, I have here a green LED light. So notice how this green light cannot charge the lit. I hold it right on there, it doesn't charge it. It also cannot charge the blue. You can't see the lines on it at all. But now if I switch it to a blue LED light, now watch what happens. <laughs> See, I can just write on the green lit with it. So I'm using a higher frequency than the green lit. I'm using a higher frequency than the wavelength of light that it can emit, so that means it can charge it. But now if I try to do that on the blue, it barely charges it, which means this is a little bit higher frequency than the blue light that this emits. And then if I use a red light, the red light can't charge the green or the blue because this is the lowest frequency. So it can't charge either of them just like the green couldn't charge it. So you can see that the blue lit can only be charged with something that has a higher frequency than this blue light here. And the green lit can only be charged with something that has a higher frequency than this green light. So the green lit can take anything from here on but the blue lit can only take anything from here on. So that means for normal white light, there's a smaller range of light that can actually charge the blue lit. So let's put them on equal playing grounds and use an ultraviolet light. This should be able to charge both the blue and the green. Okay, so now let's try the ultraviolet light on our green lit. Whoa. Look at that. That is way bright. Now let's try it on our blue. So both of them are pretty bright, but you can see that the green is much brighter than the blue still. So does that mean that the green is working better than the blue? Well, I don't know if we can say that exactly because actually even though ultraviolet light can be absorbed by both of them, the ultraviolet light has a much higher frequency compared to the green than the blue. So the next test we'll be doing is seeing if both of them can be charged by heat. Because one of the cool things about lit is not only can it be charged by light, but it can also be charged by thermal collisions. Okay, so I just have a heater here, so I'm going to blow it directly on the lit. I'll do the green first and then the blue, and we'll see if it actually gets brighter as the heat is blowing on it. Okay, let's turn off the lights. Okay, you can see it barely glowing here. Let's turn on our heat. Ah, 
They're getting brighter. Looks like it's getting brighter. Whoa. Look at that. <laughs> so you can see my heater here. I'm just blowing the heat on it, and it's getting brighter. <laughs> That's so cool. So look how bright this is just after a few minutes. So no light was shined on this, and it's just super bright now just from the heat. OK, now let's try the blue. Turn off the light. OK, you can see it faintly glowing right there. Turn it on. See if it gets brighter. Well, that's actually getting brighter a lot faster than the green did. <laughs> Look at that. That's so cool. Look how bright it is now. So again, no light was shined on this. It just started glowing brighter and brighter due to the heat itself. In fact, even if you just put your hand on the lit, it will charge it. So what's actually charging it is due to the thermal collisions. So the electrons can jump up to a higher energy state, whether they're charged through a specific light frequency or whether they're charged due to atoms bumping into each other and knocking an electron up to a higher energy state. So for example, watch me put my hand on the lit here. Look at it glow where my handprint was. That's so cool. Okay, let's see if we can see my handprint on here. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna do our green and blue lit versus the 32,000 lumen flashlight. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, that's so bright, I can't even look at it. Whoa, <laughs> look how bright those are. It's like I have a light shining. <laughs> that is so cool. Look at this. You can totally see my hand and everything in this dark room just from the light coming off this glow in the dark material. That is so cool. I can't believe how bright that got with this 32,000 lumen flashlight. Charge it up one more time. Holy cow, that is so cool. Look how you can just totally see stuff. It's like a flashlight. Okay, now for the final test, we're gonna see if you can actually use blue lit to charge green lit. So we know that we cannot use green lit to charge other green lit because it doesn't have high enough frequency to knock it up that little bit higher than it needs in order to charge it before it releases the green light. In fact, I tried that in a different video and it can't happen. But now that we have a glow in the dark material that can release a higher frequency than the green lit, now we can see if the blue glow in the dark material can charge the green glow in the dark material. And the reason I'm using red light right now is because this green lit, and I painted this one on different than my previous one, my other one is still charged a little bit and so I don't wanna use that one. So this one is completely uncharged green lit. You can see that if I turn out the light, it doesn't glow at all. What I wanna do is I'll charge my blue lit and then I'm gonna hold it right next to the green and see if it can charge the green. So one glow in the dark material charging another one. Okay, let's get the blue completely charged. This is my UV light, so it should have plenty of energy to charge the blue. This stuff is so cool. Okay, now we're gonna see if it can charge the green. Let's put it face down on it. Here we go. See if this works. Turn my red light on so you can see what's happening here. So 
So I have it face down on top of it. So I'll leave it on there for a little while. Let's take it off. Hey, it is glowing a little bit. Okay, so I could see it, but it's really hard to capture on camera, basically because your eyes are a lot better at seeing low light than cameras are. So I took a long exposure shot of this whole setup, and this should be completely dark because I had it in a dark room for several days, and so this should have had no charge to it. But you can see that there's a slight charge to it. And all of the other glow-in-the-dark stuff you can see around it is the green lit that I had charged everywhere else throughout this experiment. So it's just the drops and powder that I got everywhere. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And head over to theactionlab.com to check out the Action Lab subscription box. And if you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.